Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami, they're all very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles. Thus they are honored all over the three worlds and they are worth taking shelter of because they are absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Radha and Krishna. So continuing our reading from the Nectar of Devotion, we're reading from the chapter Ev Evidence Regarding Devotional Principles. This subheading, Accepting Only What Is Necessary. In the Naradiya Purana it is directed, one should not accept more than necessary if he is serious about discharging devotional service. The purport is that one should not neglect following the principles of devotional service, nor should one accept the rulings of devotional service, which are more than what he can easily perform. For example, it may be said that one should chant the Hare Krishna mantra at least 100,000 times daily on his beats. But if this is not possible, then one must minimize his chanting according to his own capacity. Generally, we recommend our disciples to chant at least 16 rounds on their japa beats daily and this should be completed. But if one is not even able to chant 16 rounds, then he must make it up the next day. He must be sure to keep his vow. If he does not strictly follow this out, then he is sure to be negligent. That is offensive in the service of the Lord. If we encourage offenses, we shall not be able to make progress in devotional service. It is better if one fixes up a regulative principle 
according to his own ability and then follows that vow without fail. That will make him advanced in spiritual life. So, Prabhupada quotes there that we're supposed to chant 100,000 names, right? Once you chant at least 100,000 names, 100,000 times daily on his beats. In other words, 100,000 times in 64 rounds. That was the standard when Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati established the Gaudiya Mat. 64 rounds was chanted by the devotees. And in fact, this was coming from I think Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, the Goswamis of Vrindavan, of course they would chant many rounds. So 64 rounds was considered not very much <laughs> to them, you know. Of course Haridas Thakur was chanting 300,000 times a day, which is like 192 rounds, you know. <laughs> we cannot even begin to imagine to chant 192 rounds, but we know to chant 64 rounds a day is really not very easy. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of concentration. And, uh, but in the times of the Gaudiya Mat, people were doing this 64 rounds. Of course, that was uh, maybe like how many years now? It's about 80, 90 years ago, those days. So it's a different lifestyle and it was, of course, also in India. In India, 80, 90 years ago, it was, life was very simple, not like it is today, you know, with motor cars and racing everywhere and rushing and stress problems. It's a different lifestyle. So people generally they could manage 64 rounds. Bhaktivikas Swami has written about it in his book on Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Goswami and he described it. He has people saying uh, some of the devotees would chant 64 rounds before they did anything, before they ate any kind of food. They first of all chant 64 rounds. So they spend like half the day, you know, spend the whole morning chanting 64 rounds. But uh, very difficult for most of us. So Prabhupada gave us concession that we could chant 16 rounds. But he said, what, you know, if, if, we're, if we're not able to do that, he doesn't say you can do less. He said what you have to do is make it up the next day. <laughs> Prabhupada, he doesn't say, you know, if you can't do 16 rounds, then just do 8. No. But what he says is, if you cannot do 16 rounds one day, you have to make it up the next day. And so he, Prabhupada doesn't accept that you can't do less than, that he doesn't allow us to do less than 16 rounds. We should try, everybody, at least those of us who are connected officially into Krishna consciousness. When we make a vow at the time of initiation, then we promise to chant 16 rounds. And we should keep that vow. So, accepting only what is necessary. Hmm? This is also could be related to Atyahara, overeating, over collecting, over endeavoring. Nectar of instruction speaks a lot about those things. And so accept only what is necessary. Don't take more than we need. We should know what is our ability, how much we can actually do. How much we, uh, and how much we deserve. Here's another quote, we'll read a little more. Observing fasting on a codice. 
In the Brahma Vaivarta Purana, it is said that one who observes fasting on a Kadasi day is freed from all kinds of reactions <coughs> to sinful activities and advances in pious life. The basic principle is not just to fast, but to increase one's faith and love for Govinda or Krishna. The real reason for observing fasting on Ekadasi is to minimize the demands of the body and to engage our time in the service of the Lord by chanting or performing similar service. The best thing to do on fasting days is to remember the pastimes of Govinda and to hear his holy name constantly. Right? So Prabhupada is pointing out the important part of the Ekadasi is not just only the fasting, but to increase our remembrance of Krishna or Govinda by doing more chanting and more hearing. So nowadays many centers they are in arranging programs on Ekadasi. Because many centers, you know, like here, it's more on a, the weekend. You get more, it's much more of a congregation. And the congregation comes to, together whenever there's a festival or on the weekends. So Ekadasi is also like a festival day. It's very good if you can somehow arrange to have another program on Ekadasi and call everyone to come and have nice kirtan and you could have a class also and then or if there's nobody will, likes to give class then you can always have more kirtan and ekadasi prasadam it's nice to encourage the devotees in that way but it's not just simply fasting some people you know they give a lot of importance no fat no eating no drinking they do nirjao but they, then they don't chant regularly. There was one person I met, I remember, they were, they, they were proud, they followed the, the full Ekadasi near Jao, but the next day they didn't even follow four regulated principles. They ate meat even, you know. So that kind of behavior is useless. First one has to follow the four basic principles. I'll just read one more. Offering respect to the banyan trees. In the Skanda Purana it is directed that a devotee should offer water to the Talasi plant and Amalaka trees. He should offer respect to the cows and to the Brahmanas and should serve the Vaishnavas by offering them respectful obeisances and meditating upon them. All of these processes will help the devotee to diminish the reactions to his past sinful activities. So, this, this is very nice. Even people are not able to chant the holy name if somehow we can just train them to respect like the holy trees, like the Tosi and the Amalaka and the cows and the Brahmanas and if they, if they can serve the devotees then it's very, very good for them. It destroys sinful reactions. So in this world we're all tied up, we're all entangled with so many sinful reactions. So it's very important for us to take advantage of these processes. All right? uh, offering respect to the cows. We see how much people love dogs. <laughs> but they, rarely do they know about respecting cows. It's such an important aspect of the Vedic culture. We're trying to educate people about the importance of cows. One devotee was making the point, I heard he was saying that people 
Sometimes people in the cities, they don't even know that milk comes from the cow. They think milk is something like, uh, you get it like what you get alcohol from a brewery or Coca-Cola, you know, from the Coca-Cola factory. So they think milk is something like that, it's something produced. So it, it's important for people to learn about these things. Of course, nowadays there's a big movement, vegan, and people don't even want to drink milk. But they should understand that milk is actually a very important uh, substance. It, it is a religion in the form of liquid. And Prabhupada explains, he said, simply by drinking milk, one gets pious activities. The vegans, they think it's sinful, they think we're exploiting the cows. But if we take care of the cow, then there's, it's no harm to drink their milk. The cows eat grass and they give milk. And they give enough milk. They don't just give milk for their calf. Once the calves grow, they don't want the milk and the cow also doesn't want to feed its milk to the calf. But it still gives milk. And that milk is meant for the human beings. So the cow and the humans are meant to help each other. This planet belongs to the cows, all right? The deity of this planet is Mother Bhumi and she has the form of a cow. And the cows need us, they're a domestic animal. They need us to take care of them. And we need the cow because from the cow we get milk and from milk we can make ghee. And ghee is very important for performance of yagya. We cannot do yajna without ghee. So cows are very important. Nowadays, of course, also many of our temples, the devotees are selling things made from the cow. The toothpaste and the soap and so many medicines and, so, and cow urine also. All very good medicinal things. And so that way people are learning more about the importance of cows. And then also for sacred trees like Tosi. Simply by keeping the Tosi tree in the home, the home becomes sanctified. Learning how to respect these trees is also very important. Some people think Tosi is just some medicine and they we have to stop people. Sometimes they come and they want to tear off the leaves from the tree. They don't respect the Tosi. They simply want to take our leaves and cook some tea or have some medicine. We have to teach them how to properly care for Tosi and how to respect her. And then also, of course, devotees. People should also have nice regard for the devotees. Prabhupada he said, serving the devotees, offering service to the devotees, right? By serving the devotees opens the doors to liberation. Very powerful. So, of course, devotee doesn't like to take service. We like to give service. It's important, right? We're, we really don't like to take service but we want to give service. Our mood is to give service. We're a service industry, right? We're here to serve. And the best service we can do is to give the holy name, chanting. Okay, we'll go on to Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Jaiva Narotamam 
Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 21, entitled Conversation Between Manu and Kardama, text number 18. Nate Jaraksha Nate Jaraksha Brahmir Ayur Esham Trayo Dasharam Trishatam Shasti Parva San Nemi Ananta Chadi Yat Trinabi Karala Shroto Jagat Achidya Davat Nate Jaraksha Brahmir Ayuresham Trayo dasharam trishatam shasti parva Sanne mi ananta chadi 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 yatrinabhi Karala shroto jagat achidya dhavad Nate Jaraksha Brahmir Ayuresham Trayo Dasharam Trishatam Shasti Parva Sanne mi ananta chadiyatri nabi Karala shoto jagat achidya davad Nate jaraksha brahmira yuresham Shai O Dasharam Trishatam Shasti Parva Sanne Mianta Chadiyatri Nabi Karala Shroto Jag Achidyadavad Parva, 
मैंने जी त्रयोदशरम त्रिशत षष्टि पर्व सन्नेमीयता चलियना स्रोत जगछिदावत न Not te your ajara of imperishable Brahman aksha on the exo Brahmi rotating are you span of life a sham of the devotees trio dasha. Thirteen, Aram, spokes, three shatam, three hundred, shasti, sixty, parva, functions, sat, six, nemi, rims, ananta, innumerable. Chadi leaves yat which tree three nabi naves karala shrota with tremendous velocity jagat the universe davat running. Translation: Your wheel, which has three naves, rotates around the axis of the imperishable Brahman. It has thirteen spokes, three hundred and sixty joints, six rims, and numberless leaves carved upon it. Through its revolution. Although its revolution cuts short the lifespan of the entire creation, this wheel of tremendous philosophy cannot touch the lifespan of the devotees of the Lord. You can repeat: Your wheel, Your wheel. which has three naves, yes. rotates around the axis. Of the imperishable Brahman, it has thirteen spokes, three hundred and sixty joints, six rims, and numberless leaves carved upon it. Though its revolution cuts short the lifespan. Of the entire creation, this wheel of tremendous philosophy cannot touch the lifespan of the devotees of the Lord. Purport by Shula Prabha: The time factor cannot affect the span of life of the devotees. In Bhagavad Gita, it is stated. That a little execution of devotional service saves one from the greatest danger. The greatest danger is transmigration of the soul from one body to another, and only devotional service to the Lord can stop this process. It is stated in the Vedic literature. 
Harim vina naiva shetim taranti. Without the mercy of the Lord, one cannot stop the cycle of birth and death. In Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that only by understanding the transcendental nature of the Lord and his activities, his appearance and disappearance, can one stop the cycle of death and go back to him. The time factor is divided into many fractions of moments, hours, months, years, periods, seasons, etc. All the divisions in this verse are determined according to the astronomical calculations of Vedic literature. There are six seasons called Ritus and there is a period of four months called Chaturmashya. Three periods of four months complete one year. According to Vedic astronomical calculations, there are 13 months. The 13th month is called Adimas or Malamas and it is added every third year. The time factor, however, cannot touch the lifespan of the devotees. In another verse, it is stated that when the sun rises and sets, it takes away the life of a living, of all living entities, but it cannot take away the life of those who are engaged in devotional service. Time is compared here to a big wheel which has 360 joints, six rims in the shape of seasons, and numberless leaves in the shape of months. It rotates on the eternal existence, Brahman. Om Ajnana Tumarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militan Yenat has my Sri Gurave Nama Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Kardama Muni is speaking and he is describing the nature of time and how it has a very powerful effect on those who are not devotees. Those who are not engaged in devotional service are very much affected by the influence of time. And of course that time is also described in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says that he, time I am, destroyer of the world, and I come to claim all people. But for you Pandavas, everyone else will be claimed by the effects of time. So time takes away every one of us from this material world. We have a fixed time, we have a fixed number of breaths in this world. We do not know when our final breath will come, but you know, for all of us it's there. There's a finite number of breaths. Time is limited. And that this time is all under the direction of the Lord. But when we take shelter of the Lord, then we have a special uh, immunity from the effects of time. You can see uh, how when uh, a tiny lion cub doesn't have to have any fear of the lion. The mother and father lion are not fearful to the lion cub because the lion cub has taken shelter of the mother and father. And similarly, you can see in the flowing Ganga, you know, those of you, who, probably many of you have been to India, you've taken a bath in the Ganga, and you know how strong the current is. You go into the Ganga, you can't, to swim against the current is really difficult. 
Even the big elephant gets in the Ganga, it's difficult. They, they struggle. So, the, the current is so strong. But, tiny little fish, they can swim against the current. Because they've taken shelter of the Ganga. And so they can swim against the current. We're not able to do that. And time works the same way. When we take shelter of Krishna, then time does not have that same effect on the lifespan of the devotee. The devotee is protected. Prabhupada quotes a number of verses in the purport from the scripture. He begins with uh, referring to the verse of Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, Nehapi kramana shosti pratyavayo na vidyate svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahatopayat. That in this endeavor there is no loss or diminution, and a little advancement made can save us from the greatest danger. So the danger, of course, is that we didn't use our time properly. We were careless in the use of our time. We wasted our time, right? We, we talk about, we say, time is money. Sometimes the big companies like that, you know, they will have these kind of slogans that time is money, and money is the honey, and like this, you know, you have to be really careful, use your time carefully, don't waste time. So, uh, it's important for devotees, the devotees that we understand the value of time and we know that time is also a form of Krishna, very powerful. We have to take shelter of Krishna and use the time very carefully for his service. Then Prabhupada talks about how simply by understanding the transcendental nature of Krishna, right? Janma karma chame devyam evam yo veti takvadaha takvadeham punarjanma naiti mamiti sarjana. Sometimes it's said this is probably the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita because Krishna is saying that if we understand his janma and karma to be divyam, that his birth and his activities are all transcendental, then takvadiham punarjanma naiti mamiti sarjana. When we give up the body, we never have to take birth again. That's very important, very important for devotees. We don't want to keep coming again in this material world, fighting maya, fighting the material energy. We want to take shelter of Krishna. By taking shelter of Krishna, under hearing about his transcendental pastimes, his appearance and activities in this world, and by becoming absorbed in these things, then we never have to take birth again in this world. We come to him. I was reading in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, it is very interestingly described by Sanatana Goswami. He is talking about Vaikuntha. Gopkumar had come to Vaikuntha and he was surprised to see so many different living entities there in Vaikuntha. You know, even worms in the ground and plants and fish and these different creatures. So, how to understand the Vaikuntha, that all the inhabitants of Vaikuntha are pure devotees. They all have Satchitananda bodies, but sometimes they, they can take these kind of forms, even in the spiritual world. And so, it, it it's explained that according to the absorption which a devotee has, he will take a particular form. Just like someone may be absorbed in the Lord's form as Machya, Machya avatar, right? You may be very 
much devotee to the Lord in his form as Matsya. So in that way, you, when you go to the spiritual world, you may get the body like a fish. And for some time, you like that? You're in, you know, it's explained that they can also change their bodies at different times. But because they're worshipping the Lord in that body of the fish, and because they're absorbed in that particular form, so then when they go back to Godhead, when they go to Vaikuntha, they can get that kind of form, just like a fish. And similarly with Lord Varaha. Lord Varaha, there are many great devotees of Lord Varaha. And when, if you're meditating on Lord Varaha, when you go back to Godhead, you may take the body like a boar. And you say, but it's all transcendental. It's not a material form. It's a pure form of eternity, knowledge and bliss. And one takes these particular forms simply for the pleasure of the Lord. For the pleasure of Krishna, you take these particular forms. So we want to understand all of these different things about the nature of the Lord's birth and his activities. And then that qualifies us to get free from the material world. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's also described uh, by Sukadeva Goswami. It describes how as the sun rises and sets, you know, as the sun mounts the wheel of time, it reduces the duration of life, right? Prabhupada used to tell us, you know, people say, I am 30 years old. Actually, you're 30 years dead, right? Or you're 50 years old, you're 50 years dead. Not like that. We're nearer to death every moment. With the sun rising and setting, another day passes and reduces the duration of our life. We're coming closer to death at every moment. But that is not true for those who are engaged in hearing the topics of the Lord. Because we have taken shelter of the Lord, so we're not, we're not affected. Our life is not reduced. We, we are engaged in the eternal activity, hearing and chanting the glories of the Supreme Lord. So the duration of life is not affected. But everyone else, because they're engaged in their karmic activities, so these karmic activities simply reduce the duration of life, bring us closer to our death. But for the devotees of the Lord, who are engaged always in hearing and chanting, then it's a different state of affairs. Of course, it's difficult for us to understand or to appreciate how this works, but this is a statement of the scriptures. We have to understand that the Lord has inconceivable potencies, right? Inconceivable potencies. Just like sometimes scientists and doctors and things, they, they can do things which appear amazing, Oh, it's so amazing, they can do these different things. They can put, like scientists, they put spaceships up into orbit and they can send signals. And, and doctors can do things like, in, you know, they, nowadays so many people, that they're, they're not able to have a child the normal way. They go to the birth bank or something like this and they, you know, by some other artificial means, they're able to produce a child in the womb of a woman. Mm -hmm. Like this, you know, inconceivable how they can do all of these things. And so just as people like scientists and doctors and so on have some powers, great powers, so the Supreme Lord, He has the greatest power and His power, His potencies are totally inconceivable, achintya shakti, right? And by his inconceivable potency, he can arrange for the devotees 
to transcend the influence of the material nature and the influence of time, which reduces everything. Now in the spiritual world there is also time, but it's of a different nature. The time in the spiritual world is very different from time here in the material world. In the spiritual world there is the influence of time. It appears like day and night, but there's no big degradation. There's, you know, just like here, uh, oh, they were talking about the Titanic. Remember that big ship that sunk on its first voyage? So they said it's been in the bottom of the sea now for more than a hundred years. And everything is diminishing, it's reducing, because it's there in the bottom of the sea, so it's corroding, and the corrosion is reducing. And after, you know, maybe thousands of years, there'll be nothing, it will be totally dissolved. So that's the effect of time, it reduces everything, material world. You get a car, you may have a new car, but it doesn't stay new, right? It diminishes, it gets old, the engine starts to wear out, it starts to corrode, and after some time you need to change the car. And you build a house, but after some time the house also is going to fall apart, right? In constructing Mayapur, the devotees were very conscious about how to make the design in such a way that it can remain for the maximum period of time. Because when you use concrete, then it doesn't last long. Concrete buildings don't stay very long. They start to fall apart. It's the nature of the... even steel reinforced concrete, it also starts to deteriorate with time. So this is the nature of time. But in the spiritual world, although there's the influence, the impression of time, it doesn't have that decaying effect. The impressions of time are there simply for the pleasure of Krishna. Because Krishna takes pleasure in the day, in the night, and you know, different times of the day, the different activities the Lord will do, that at night will be Rasa Leela, and during the day will be worship, do different things, maybe, uh, I don't know what actually the Lord, maybe he'll go to his dharma, dharma, Sudharma assembly and sit in the court there and hear from the citizens. Different activities, different times of the day. In the evening, relax, maybe talk with his wife and play chess, play some chess or something. So the Lord is a person and he likes variety. He likes some variety and time allows for different varieties of activities. So in the spiritual world there is the impression of time but it doesn't decay everything. In the same way, when a devotee engages in devotional service, when we purely absorb our mind and senses in the service of Krishna, then the time also doesn't have that, degrad that degrading effect. It doesn't diminish everything. But we have to be fully absorbed in devotional service. Our service has to be really intense, right? Sadhana bhakti has to be really, you know, we have to be full on, fully absorbed. Body, mind and words, all in the service of Krishna. There's a verse. Iha yasya harir dashi karmana manasagira nikilas papi vavastas tu jivan mukta uchati. One who uses body, mind and words in the service of Krishna, then he is a liberated soul, even in this lifetime. So one can be liberated, not that you have to have four arms, 
But liberation means you're above the effects of the modes of nature. You're above the effects of time, which diminish everything, which take away everything. A similar verse is there in the Ishopanishad. When we studied Ishopanishad, remember that verse, it says, one may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continues going on doing work in that way. What way? What way was being described? Who knows? Ishopanishad? What's being described? One may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he goes on doing work in that way, for that work does not bind him to the law of karma. The previous verse was Ishyavasya Midam Sarvam, right? That when you work in the spirit of Ishyavasya, with God in the center, then you can go on, you're not under the influence of karma, right? Everything animate and inanimate, with this, and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should accept, therefore, only those things necessary for oneself. One should not accept more, knowing well to whom they belong. So like that, that's Ishyavashya, recognizing the Lord's in the center. He's the proprietor. And just simply taking what is necessary for ourselves, minimizing the demands of the body. And in this way, satisfying the Lord by engaging in devotional activities, hearing, chanting. So this is what takes us out of the material nature, when we take shelter of Krishna. Daivihiesha gunamayi mama maya durajaya, mameva ye prapajyante mayami tam tarantite. If we surrender to Krishna, then we cross over the material nature. But without surrender to Krishna, very difficult to get free. Simply struggle and cannot get out. Helpless. So we have to uh, appreciate here these words of Kardama Muni. He is glorifying the process of devotional service, bhakti yoga. He's encouraging us make good use of our time because it's definitely limited, right? We're not eternal. Any questions, comments? Yes, Prabhu? Where is the axis of the imperishable Brahman? The axis of the imperishable Brahman. Well, you see, it's being given a fig. It's, this is a figurative example which is given here. <laughs> the, where is the imperishable Brahman, first of all, right? You should ask like that. Where is the imperishable Brahman? <laughs> imperishable Brahman means the effulgence coming from the body of Krishna. It, and it's generally the imperishable Brahman is uh, unmanifested. It's, uh, we see it more like a dazzling light. And so, anyway, uh, it's from the imperishable Brahman that we have the effect of time. It rotates on the eternal existence Brahman, right? The example, all, all of these different parts of time were related to different parts of a wheel because time is cyclical. Sometimes people don't understand time, they think time is linear, they think it's just progressing, but actually there's a cycle in time. Now we're in Kali Yuga, but in the past there have been Kali Yuga before. Many, many millions of years ago, there was Kali Yuga before. You see, so it's a cycle, just as there are seasons, the seasons are a cycle, 
And so time also in relation to the evolution of the world is also a cycle. And so the wheel is the appropriate way, a nice example in which we can relate to time, that it's a cycle. And the center of the wheel is the axis, right? The axle of the wheel. You have a bicycle and there's an axle, the center there. And so that axis is described to be, what is the axis? The imperishable Brahman, right? It says the imperishable Brahman is axis. And time is rotating about that. So the different seasons and cycles are all there. And at the center, the foundation or the root of that is the Brahman the axis. The wheel is supported from the axis. If you know axis, the wheel just claps. So the axis is there. It holds that whole wheel in position. It gives a strength to the wheel. From the axis, the spokes come out, right? So what is holding this time in position is this Brahman. Hmm? That's why it's compared to the axis. But we don't, you can't see these things, we have to hear about it and then contemplate it and you can understand. It's an analogy. Mm -hmm. So that the Brahman, this whole material manifestation also comes from the Brahman. The Mayavadis, they quote, they say, Sarvam Kauvidam Brahma. Everything is Brahma. They're fond to quote that. Well, of course, the Brahman is eternal. As the Brahman is eternal, time is also eternal. Must I say what the pig makes the indicate for? Huh? The pig makes Three names. What? What is it? Yeah. I'm think. I, I'm not sure about this myself. I, I don't know this word names. What is it? Center point Center from point the of, church. Yes. of a church. Main entrance or where? Or, or. Is it related to neighbor? The three nabi. Is that what it said? Three nabi? Is it mm -hmm. on the, from the navel? Yeah. Is that what they're talking about? Nabi. Yeah. Naves. Yeah. Nabi. Naves. So navel, right? Nabi. Nabi, that's the, the, uh, the source of everything, like the Nabi, uh, from the navel of Garbhodakshayi Vishnu, the lotus flower comes out. Okay, I, I didn't see it in the form of naves, I never saw that form, but navel, yeah, the, the navel. So, the, again, it's, it's like the axis, you know, it, it's the foundation, the root from which everything comes out. It said three names. Three names. Uh, the three names are three periods of four months. Talking about the three periods of four months. Just like now is Chaturmasya. That's one period of four months. So there's two other to make up one year. So in this way, three names. Why? Yeah, this problem. Yeah? Uh, when you read in the letter of devotion, Srila Prabhupada says that one should assess one's capacity uh, or something to that extent, to that effect. And then you say that we really have to have like a 
full on Savannah commitment. So how to manage these two? On one hand, we <laughs> on the other hand, we may say, oh, you know, I just want to take it easy. Uh, well, I'm not ready. That's why the spiritual teachers are there to guide us and to direct us that they generally understand more about what we're capable of and what we can do. So we take guidance from the senior authorities to tell us what, what would be good for us. You know, we take, we don't just decide on our, on our own, but we, we, you want to get some confirmation from the higher authorities. Just like uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj was writing the Chaitanya Charitamrita, but before he did it, he first of all got blessings also from the devotees, from the, all the Vaishnavas, and he even went to see the deities there in Vrindavan and took the blessings from them. So generally, this is a process that we, we don't act independently, but we, we recognize, you know, there's some other devotees there and they probably can guide us. That uh, is what I'm doing, is it all right? Is it reasonable or is it not right? What do you think? You know, you want to chant more rounds, you want to study more, you want to do more preaching, you want to, somehow, you want to do something maybe a little different from what you've been doing, and so you take a, you get some advice from senior devotee, from the spiritual authorities, dikshas and shiksha gurus are there to guide us. We have to know. It's nice though, we get some inspiration from the heart. And then we, 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 we can ask some devotees, what do you think? Is this, re am I being reasonable, what I'm doing? Is it reasonable? I want to go to Mayapur. I want to leave everything and go to Mayapur and just be in Mayapur. Is this reasonable? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you get some advice about it. You don't just, oh, okay, I'm just going, I'm going to Mayapur. I drop everything. No, no, but first of all, we take advice, get some instruction, get some confirmation, get some blessings even, and then that way, then we can achieve our, our goal. You may want to, somebody may want to do a lot of chanting, coming up to Kartik, they may want to do more japa, more rounds, some people make vows during the month of Kartik, to do more japa. Some people may like to do more preaching work, more book distribution, and offering more, get more people to offer lamps. So, yeah, we, we can get the blessings, get confirmation from the senior devotees. Somebody wants to just sit and chant japa or karti, and somebody else wants to go out and do preaching, book distribution. So what is right? We have to get, get the instruction, take direction from the seniors. So they may say, you know, we really need you to go out and preach and distribute books. It's very nice you'd like to sit and chant, but it's also a good time for preaching. And you can do the chanting another time. Yeah. Chanting you can always do, not just in Karti. But preaching, it's very good time with the Diwali and the, the mood there. We know that it's a very favorable time for book distribution and preaching, contacting people. We don't have that opportunity all the time. So we have to be open to what other people think, not just only decide everything on our own. That's a nice way.
being cooperative, so being willing to hear from others. Yeah? That's what I would suggest. Try to follow. <laughs> Okay, any other question? Prabhus? Okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupada ki.